We continue our study this morning from the book of Ezekiel. Uh, one more lesson, I think, from Ezekiel. Then we'll be going to the book of Acts for our summer uh, quarter, maybe eight lessons from the book of Acts. But this morning we're talking about the Good Shepherd. Thank God that uh, Ezekiel, you know, he had a he had a rough way to go trying to prophesy to the hard-headed people we we have been studying about over the past few weeks. But as our lesson unfolds this morning, uh, he begins to let the people know that even though the condition they may be in, there's still a good shepherd. There's a good shepherd that cares for them that that is faithful to them. And you know, we have a, a good shepherd this morning yes. that we can cast our cares <laughs> upon knowing that, that he cares for us. He's, he, he's not one of those that just says he cares and uh, lets us go, throws us away, but, but he truly cares. And it's good this morning to know that he cares. So uh, the good shepherd, what is a shepherd? Uh, it's someone that guides or directs it uh, is someone uh, uh, that, that guards the flocks or someone that uh, attends and, and loves and, and cares for that that they are over in. And we have a shepherd this morning that cares about you, that cares about me. You know, he has never uh, turned not one away that has truly come unto him and, and, and repented, truly come unto him and desired him to be a uh, uh, Lord uh, of their lives. So we're going to be talking about a shepherd this morning. And uh, I was reminded as I was studying this lesson, what I heard Brother Walker say uh, uh, several years ago, he was talking about a time he was over in Israel and uh, he, he watched as these two shepherds come together and their flocks begin to intermingle and uh, hundreds of sheep. And he said, there's no way in the world that the uh, 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 they'll ever get them separated. But he said as the, as the two shepherds uh, uh, parted ways and, and made the call that, that those sheep immediately knew their master. I tell you, we, we've got a master this morning that knows every one of us. He, he knows where we're at. He, he, he knows our situations. Thank God this morning. But uh, Ezekiel, he began to prophesy as we see uh, here in uh, chapter 34 of his uh, of his book about some shepherds that were very unkind, very uh, uh, very bad shepherds. Uh, we, we might say that uh, only cared about themselves. They wasn't interested in the sheep, those that they was leading, but they was only interested in serving themselves. And you know, we got a lot of leaders today that's in the same boat, don't we? But I, I'm glad this morning. That we've got one shepherd. Thank God that, that cares for his own. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you all the way even to the ends of the world. So let's read our lesson this morning. All of our lesson comes out of the 34th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 34 and 2. Son of man prophesied against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? And we see here some serious accusations against the leaders of the land of Judah. We, we, we can study about the kings, all the kings of the northern tribes, 19 of the kings, uh, all was bad. And you think about it, wicked, evil leaders that that uh, would not adhere to the word of God, but they led uh, they led the people astray of Judah, the southern kingdom. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there was nine out of nineteen kings that was righteous. That uh, the people flourished when the righteous ruled. You, you know, the word of God tells us that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked uh, are ruled, then the people are downcast. But uh, this morning, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the accusations that God, uh, uh, through the prophet Ezekiel, uh, uh, levied to the uh, uh, to the leaders of Israel. And when he was talking about the leaders, he was uh, not only 
only was he talking about the priests, the prophets, the kings as the rulers, of a, uh, but, but he had the whole, the whole shebang, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, in mind. You know, the people had become uh, evil. The people had become, uh, the people had become uh, like their leaders in, in many ways. You know, the old saying is the leader many times goes uh, the people that are under him. But thank God uh, he has given us under shepherds to preach his word. Uh, uh, for a shepherd to not preach and, and care for God's sheep, you know, uh, uh, it's a shame. But there's many shepherds out there that are hirelings this morning. They're preaching. Uh, they're preaching for filthy lucre for that almighty dollar. They're not preaching because they care for the sheep. They're not preaching because they've been called of God, but they're doing uh, they're doing it on their own means. But uh, every leader, every leader, whether it's a civil or whether it's a religious <coughs> a leader, <coughs> uh, uh, always uh, many of them don't have the heart of a shepherd, but. I'll tell you, to be a leader, to, to, to be a, 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 a true shepherd, you, you've got to have a shepherd's heart. And, and I believe that we can uh, see that in our uh, lesson uh, uh, this morning. So, you, you know, those that God has set up, those that God has called, we, we need to uphold them in prayer and, and pray for your pastor. And, and I believe uh, that, that we do here. I, I believe that we uh, are people of prayer for uh, uh, for our pastor, for our leader. But thank God this morning, uh, as Ezekiel begins to level the charges that God had given unto him, brother, uh, he had some pretty, pretty stiff words of accusations, brother, uh, against the leaders. Quickly, I want to read introduction to our lesson. There are times that we wish for a bit of good news. On the days when troubles and trials and temptations and tests pile up, we long for divine intervention. At our lowest point, we pray for things to turn around. God is faithful to meet us at those low points and to give us a message of hope. That is exactly what he did for Israel in Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel's message of judgment spans the first 33 chapters of the book. The prophet repeatedly rebukes the Israelites for their idolatry, their wickedness, and unfaithfulness. God is angry, and Ezekiel describes God's anger vividly and powerfully. In fact, God is ready to punish Israel severely. God's threats are fulfilled when the Babylonians destroy Jerusalem and the temple of the Lord uh, and the land of Israel is made a desolation and the remaining people are led away as captive to join Ezekiel and his companions in Babylon. Now we keep in mind that Ezekiel had been in Babylon uh, uh, for a few years before uh, the final destruction uh, of the city. The destruction of Jerusalem marks the lowest point in the book of Ezekiel, the presence of the Lord had departed from Jerusalem. You know, Ezekiel talks about that uh, even the, the presence of the Lord had departed from the house of God. Think about uh, uh, what a sad, uh, a sad predicament when God, the temple that was built for His glory and for His honor, and then when He was no longer welcome in His own house, and, and Ezekiel saw God's glory departing from the temple. What a low state it was in the lives of the people of Israel. The Israelites had lost their land, the temple, their way of life, and their liberty. They had hit bottom. However, at their lowest point, God speaks a word of promise. In the darkest hour, God shines a light of hope. Ezekiel had predicted Jerusalem's death. Now he predicts her resurrection. The exile is not the end. In the remainder of his book, Ezekiel tells us of its six, at least six new components of a restored Israel. He talks about a new shepherd, a new covenant, a new land, a new nation, a new king, and a new temple. Today's lesson, we're going to focus on on uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, restoration that is foretold 
uh, through the prophet Ezekiel. Our central truth this morning, Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who cares for his sheep. How many has found him to be a good shepherd? How many has found him to be faithful and true as John the Revelator talks about? Oh, he's, he's the good shepherd. He, as I said, he has told us, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. What a promise. You know, many times uh, 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 in the days, uh, you know, Jesus even talked about that the, the hirelings, when they was uh, 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 the shepherd, that often that they would run. Brother, when there was danger, that they would flee and leave the sheep uh, uh, to fend for themselves. But, oh, thank God this morning, our shepherd didn't leave us to fend for ourselves because we couldn't fend for ourselves because there's no way that, that our righteousness uh, uh, would have appeased a, a righteous and a holy God. But the shepherd that we're talking about this morning, brother, he paid a sin debt that you and I could not pay when he went to Calvary. Uh, uh, he'll keep us. What a promise. He'll keep us through the trials, through the troubles, through the times when the predators uh, come to kill, steal, and destroy. He'll keep us. We can rest assured that God our Father and Jesus, our great high priest, always has your and my best interest in mind. The focus of our lesson this morning is to compare sinful leadership with godly leadership and commit to follow Christ. As we have said, you know, we can look at the kings and we can look at the judges that done right in the sight of the Lord and, and how the people would rejoice opposed to those that, that did evil and how the, the people were in bondage. Imagine this emphasis of our lesson this morning. Jesus Christ gave up his life so that all sheep might be found. You, you know, it's, it, it's not God's will that one perish, but it's God's will that, that all be saved, that all come to know uh, uh, him in the free pardon of sin. It's not just for the, uh, for the Jews. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, God loved the Jews, and we see the Jews on the most part this morning has rejected Jesus as the Messiah. He didn't come. Uh, in the way that, that well, they thought he would come, but, but he has come. And, and, and in the future, all in the near, near future, the Jews is going to see that Jesus is the Messiah. They're going to they're gonna be saved as, as a nation. They're going to be birthed uh, as a nation. But we begin to think about a godly shepherds. We, we uh, think about Moses. We think about... David, we think about Joshua, oh, uh, uh, good, good shepherds. What a, what an awesome uh, a picture it was. Somebody that really loved the sheep, that cared for the people. Uh, you know, somebody that would uh, uh, lay their life down for the sheep, and that's exactly what our shepherd has done. You know, I, I think about uh, King David, just a lad out there attending his father's sheep, and, and can you imagine? Brother, as, as he tended that flock one night, a, a, an old big grouchy lion comes up, a hungry, uh, a wanting, a, wanting a, a lamb, brother, and, and, and David, brother, he didn't think twice about it. He, he took the matters in his own hand uh, under the anointing of God as that lion and that bird took that lamb out of the flock, brother. Uh, he didn't hesitate. He didn't run back. And so what am I going to do, brother? I tell you, he jumped into action, brother. And the Bible said that he delivered, brother, uh, that lamb uh, out from the paw of the bird and the paw of the lion. What a shepherd uh, 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 David uh, was as we study his life. We could read in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 5. The Bible tells us then came all the tribes of Israel to David and to Hebron and spake saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past when Saul was king over us, Thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the people, and the, as the Lord said unto thee, Thou shalt be my people Israel, and thou shalt be captain 
over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And a king David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned for 40 years in Hebron. He reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. So we find that David, he had a shepherd's heart. He had a shepherd's heart. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, I, I know David wasn't perfect. We, we, we could read about David in Scripture. And David does some things that, that uh, uh, he dearly regretted uh, in his life. And he, he, he paid severely uh, uh, with the consequences that come upon his life. But David had a shepherd's heart. David, uh, he, he would always involve the people in the in the feast, brother, and he would uh, he would care for the people. He, he would have the uh, uh, the people involved in in, in what uh, was going on. And, and I believe any good shepherd uh, wants the people uh, uh, involved in what's going on. As Brother Joe has already said this morning, uh, David wrote the Psalms. He said. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, I'll tell you, we, we've got a good shepherd uh, when we put our trust in him. You know, Jesus uh, uh, said that, that I'm the good shepherd. Let's listen to what uh, uh, John records for us in chapter 10 of John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own by name, and leadeth him out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Then we hear our master say this in verse 11. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is the hiring and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. And am known of mine. So this morning, as we begin to uh, uh, think and talk about a, a good shepherd, uh, we're going to look at some of the accusations that was brought uh, uh, against uh, the bad shepherds uh, there uh, in captivity. Uh, uh, Ezekiel begins to prophesy. Uh, part one of our lesson deals with wicked shepherds described and judged. Part two, wicked sheep. Described and judged. And part three, good shepherd described. So as our lesson opens, we here see uh, in part one, Son of Man, God told Ezekiel, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. You, you know, we... We look around our world this morning and we see so many uh, leaders there they're feeding themselves brother on the on the backs brother of the uh, of the sheep they're feeding themselves brother so uh, I believe that the accusations that we find that he, uh, God was speaking through Ezekiel that he was leveling against the leaders brother they lived in pleasure they lived in drunkenness I guess uh, uh, if we would use today's language, they probably we would say that they had their uh, uh, millions of dollars uh, uh, in their yachts, their uh, uh, multiple uh, multiple millionaires, their luxury be beach houses. But these leaders, brother, they wasn't out for the sheep. They wasn't out because uh, they cared for the sheep. But they was out for themselves. And as we say, we, we see many today uh, in the same boat. He said, should not the shepherds feed the flock? You, you know, it's the job of leaders to be servants. 
You know, Jesus himself, he said, I, I, I didn't come to be served. But he said, I've come to serve man. I've come to serve others. Think about this. The, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the, the maker of it all. Brother, and yet he humbled himself and he came to serve humanity. He came to be a, a, that good shepherd to you and I. I, I often think about the parable that Jesus said that he left the 99 and he went into the mountains and he searched for that one that was lost. Brother, he, he is still searching today for men and women that are lost, that, that, that willfully uh, uh, turn him away. You know, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Uh, he come into his home and all received him not, but to as many as received him, uh, uh, gave he uh, uh, us the power to be sons and daughters of God. What a privilege we have uh, to, to know this shepherd. What a privilege we have to be under this great shepherd's care this morning. Uh, he went on in verse 3. You eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that that was broken. Neither have you brought again that that was driven away. Neither have you saw that that was lost, but with force and with cruelty you have ruled over them. You have, with, with tyranny, with, with rigor, you, you know, this is what uh, the children of Israel wanted to get rid of when they come out of Egypt. You know, the, the cries come up in the ears of God. Oh God, hear our cries, hear our pleas, the, uh, the suffering and the sorrow that we're under. And here we find that their own leaders, their own shepherds was was, was treating uh, uh, them uh, uh, the same way that they had been treated in bondage all oh, this morning. It's good to have a good shepherd that cares for us, that loves us. You, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, he, he's a shepherd uh, uh, that uh, will never, never uh, uh, give us anything but the best. You, you know, we, we may face trials, yes. We may face troubles, yes. But can I tell you, God knows our troubles, our trials, our sickness, uh, everything we go through. Our good shepherd knows all about it. So we find that Ezekiel had received uh, uh, the news Brother, of, uh, of all that was uh, that, that was going on there, Jerusalem, uh, uh, the temple had been destroyed. So uh, here Ezekiel is leveling against the leaders, ex exploiting and abusing the sheep. Kings and officers in government were referred to as shepherds quite often in Scripture. It was their responsibility to care for the people, to protect them, and to see that their needs were met. But the selfish leaders of the kingdom of Judah had abused, exploited the people because they thought only of themselves. They built the sheep. They ate the butter. They fleeced the sheep. And they made garments of their wool and butchered the sheep and enjoyed the meat. But they failed to care for the sheep and meet their needs. Whenever leaders taken from their people but don't give them something in return. They are exploiting them. But true leaders don't exploit their people. They sacrifice for them. Jesus, the shepherd, set the example by laying down his life for the flock. He laid his life down. What a, uh, uh, what a Savior. What a Savior. You, you know, I, I was thinking as I was uh, looking at this lesson, not only does our good shepherd care for us as we live here in these natural bodies, but can you imagine when we get a, a new body, we get a glorified body, and, and, and even then he will care for us and, and, he, will, and he will be with us all, oh, thank God. Uh, he said that he will always be with us. We, we can go, brother, and, and to be with him uh, uh, when he comes or when he calls for us. But Ezekiel here, but the leaders didn't manage the nation's affairs for the sake of the sheep. You know, there's a whole lot of uh, leaders that are not managing 
uh, their nations and their countries uh, according to uh, uh, the needs of the people. But as we say, they were looking out for their own profit. They didn't care for them at all. If the leader's sins of commission were, were, were bad, their sins of omission were worse. They didn't minister to the sick or the injured, nor did they seek for the lost and scattered sheep. They ruled only with force and cruelty. Three times Ezekiel accused them of following the sheep, causing the sheep to be scattered. And a scattered flock without a shepherd is vulnerable and an easy attack by the beasts or prey. Because the leaders made selfish and unwise decisions, the nation fell apart and the flock was scattered. Uh, uh, what, what, a, what a picture we see uh, uh, of the greediness of the leaders in the day of Ezekiel. Jeremiah said this in chapter 50, verse 6. He said, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Why? They didn't have no resting place uh, uh, with leaders that that, uh, that didn't care. Isaiah said it like this in 56 and 11. He said, Yea, ye are greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain. Think, think about uh, uh, the prophecies that was given uh, uh, against the leaders, brother, uh, uh, that they had to, uh, they had not cared about the sheep. They didn't care uh, what happened to the people. They thought if they got their way, then everything was okay. But you, you know something that always amazed me? If, uh, people, leaders of, of, of this nature, uh, they think if the country goes that well, uh, I've got this or I've got that, uh, uh, we'll be afloat. But, but if the nation goes down, Brother, the leaders go down with it. You, you know, uh, so we see this morning, the metaphor of leaders and shepherds was common in, a, in the ancient world. And the biblical identification of God as Israel's shepherd goes back to Jacob's reference to God as a shepherd of the stone of Israel in Genesis 49, 24. So uh, the word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel. And the Lord pronounces woe unto the shepherds of Israel. The Lord declares the shepherds have been selfish, only looking out uh, uh, for themselves and not for their flock. In essence, the shepherds have not fulfilled their leadership responsibilities towards God's people. In the ancient world, shepherds were not owners of the sheep, but they were only caretakers. Therefore, they had no right to eat the sheep, or take the wool for themselves. Israel was God's flock, but the shepherds acted as if they owned the flock. Superseding God's authority, they sheared the sheep and slaughtered the finest of them for their own pleasure. You know, I think of the, uh, of the uh, psalmist Asaph. He said this. He said, give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Give ear. Do, do that which was right. That which is God has called that which God has called you to do. You know, a, a good leader helps, looks out uh, for his people, for their liberties and for their freedom. And uh, a shepherd's highest responsibility is to care for the sheep, protect them from danger, and prevent them from harming one another. However, Ezekiel rebukes Israel's leaders for six areas of neglect. They had not fed the sheep. You've not strengthened the disease. They have not healed the sick. They have not banished the wounded. They have not retrieved the sheep that have been driven away by predators. They have not searched for the sheep uh, who have wandered away and become lost. You know, uh, as children, we uh, we never raised no sheep there on the old place. We did uh, raise some animals, domestic animals. But uh, I hear Brother Joe, you know, talk about that they raised sheep when he was uh, when he was young and. And sheep have the tendency to wander uh, and, get, and get away uh, uh, from the shepherd many times. Uh, but I'm so glad that that shepherd's crook, Rich, 
and found me and found you. And, and God spoke to our hearts. And he became the good shepherd, the chief shepherd of our soul. Thank God these, uh, 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 these uh, shepherds that Ezekiel was mentioning here in these verses, they was not concerned about justice being done in the land. You know, to summarize, Ezekiel says the leaders have ruled the sheep with force and with cruelty. Uh, uh, conduct strictly forbidden by the law of Moses in Leviticus 25 and 43. Moreover, it was with force and with cruelty. But this is exactly uh, uh, what some of the leaders, brother, uh, had been doing. And that's the reason they was in the lowest state that they was in. As we look at our lesson today, our commentator here talks about servant leaders. And he said this, Jesus identified two basic types of leaders. <coughs> those who wanted to serve and those who served others. The first category of leaders loves attention and enjoys exercising authority over everyone else. But Jesus said that this type of leadership shall not be so among you. Instead, Christian leaders are called to be servants, for even the Son of Man did not come to, serve, uh, to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many, we're told in Scripture. So, going on here in verse 7, Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the uh, Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for the flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. In other words, brother, through the prophet Ezekiel, God was telling uh, uh, Ezekiel, to, you let these leaders know they're going to be uh, taken. Their position uh, is going to be taken. You know, we can have degrees covering our walls, but do we have a heart for people? Do we have a heart for the needs of those that are hurting? Oh, God help us. You, you know, in, a, in one way of speaking, every one of us is a, a shepherd to somebody. Every one of us is a shepherd. You know, we think of shepherds as being leaders or pastors or so forth, but uh, maybe we're the leader of the home. Brother, maybe we're the leader of somebody that looks up uh, uh, to us for spiritual guidance. So, so in a way, we can, we can all say that, that God has called us, in a sense, uh, uh, to be a shepherd, uh, to care about other people. And surely we are to care uh, uh, one for another. But in light of the shepherd's selfish behavior, the Lord pronounces judgment on them. After all the shepherds of Israel had served as it, at the bidding of the Lord, and they represented his authority and his care for, for the people. But as we talked earlier, David, David risked his life, brother, uh, uh, for the sheep. He, he risked his life for the, for the lambs that, uh, uh, that was being taken by the predators, brother, uh, out on the, on the field as, as he was the shepherd. So uh, uh, what a shepherd he was under the people. As a result of the negligent leadership, God's sheep had been scattered. Brother, it didn't have to be so. They were scattered because there was no guidance. You know, when, when leaders, uh, whether civil leaders or whether it's religious leaders, when they refrain from following the word of God, then they become a leader of themselves and they become uh, one that only cares uh, about their own ambitions and their own goals. But oh God, help us to adhere to the word of God, to the authority of the word of God. So God's judgments on the shepherds was predicted also by Jeremiah who wrote, Weep and wail, you shepherds. Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. For your time 
to be slaughtered has come. You will fall like the rest of the rams. Jeremiah 25 and 34. Uh, then we, uh, Carl Hodge wrote this, talk, uh, talking about bullying disallowed. He said this, Pastors have been called to a leadership role, and opportunities to abuse their positions abound. They must resist the temptation to control and manipulate, while the pulpit certainly should be used for vision, casting and moving forward the agenda of the body. It should not be used to bully people or advance personal agenda. I'll tell you, the pulpit is a place to feed. It's a place to guide. It's a place, brother, uh, uh, where sheep are, are, are cared for and guided and, and, and loved. We go to quickly go to part two of our lesson. Now, uh, here in part two of our lesson, we we'll pick up with uh, verse 17 as God uh, uh, speaks through the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, he, he, he here mentioning not only does the leaders have a responsibility, but the sheep themselves have also a responsibility. You know, if the leader's bad, that don't mean that the sheep uh, have to be bad. But uh, here, listen to what God says through the prophet. As for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastor, but you have tread down with your feet the residue of your pastors, and you have drunk of the deep waters, but you must uh, file the residue with your feet. In other words, uh, uh, he, through, the, uh, through the prophet Ezekiel, God is telling brother, uh, the flock is not to be putting heads or, or, or not to be, uh, uh, be agitated one with another, but there is to be unity in the flock. There is to be peace uh, in the flock. And, and where there is peace and where there is unity, oh, how good it is, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, the Word tells us. He said, and as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that that you have fouled with your feet. In other words, they say the strong of the flock many times. They take what they want, just like uh, he's talking about the leaders. They take the best of everything, and they leave the leftovers for those uh, that are helpless, those that are uh, uh, vulnerable. Then we go to verse 20. Therefore thus says the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because you have thrust with side, with shoulder, and pushed all the disease with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, therefore I will save my flock, and they shall no more be prey, and I will judge between a cattle and cattle. The Lord declares that he will judge between the fat and the lean sheep, the fat, selfish sheep represent the more affluent and influential members of Jewish society. One biblical scholar said that the upper class Israelites opposed the weak with violence and grasped the limited resources for themselves without considering the needs of those without influence or power. Even what they did not need for themselves, they spoiled, thus denying it to others. They had abandoned their traditional responsibility of the uh, of the upper class for the social well-being of the other classes. But the stronger sheep here we find had pushed and shoved the weaker ones, abusing them for selfish gain. In God's kingdom, the strong have the responsibility of caring for not abusing the weak. So uh, this, this morning, as we go to part three of our lesson, uh, I, this is the part that I wanted to get to, the good shepherd. A good shepherd described. If we back up to verse 11 here in this same chapter. We're going to see here what uh, what God said uh, uh, about his, the sheep of his pasture. For thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, this is God speaking through the prophet, I, even I, will both search for my sheep. Thank God uh, that, that he 
He searched for you. He searched for me. He, he, he's searching the Holy Spirit. Brother, he is searching uh, uh, daily. He is searching uh, the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. Brother, uh, uh, to find a bride. Brother, uh, he is searching. He is reaching out. And, and you're through the prophet Ezekiel. He said, I, even I, will both search by sheep and seek them out. They had been driven. They had been scattered uh, uh, across the globe. Now I know some uh, say that these scriptures has to do with a calling back out of a, a Babylonian captivity for 70 years. But can I tell you these scriptures, they go far deeper than just the calling back from Babylon captivity. Brother, God is going to search for his sheep Brother, if you think he's not going to search for his sheep, listen what uh, 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 God said to the prophet Ezekiel. He said, therefore say, thus said the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you've been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. You, you know, uh, uh, so many people... Uh, Brother, they want to throw condemnation uh, uh, against the Jewish state. All oh, those people, those bad people that occupy the land, uh, 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 the Palestinians, those bad people. Oh, but let me tell you something this morning. God is going to recall those people. You know, you know we've seen them come in, uh, trickle in, as we, we talked about here a couple Sundays ago. We, we see them trickling back in from many different nations of the earth back into their homeland. But you're talking about a regathering. You're talking about a regathering that's coming uh, down the road in the very near future. In Ezekiel 20 and 34, God said, And I will bring you out from the people. I will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. Ezekiel 20, 41 and 42 says this, I will accept you with your sweet savor, and I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered. And I will sanctify you before the heathen, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel and to the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give to your fathers. I want you to know, uh, God just didn't say it once or twice. God repeated it through the prophets. God repeated it through Micah. God repeated it uh, uh, through Isaiah. Uh, God repeated it several times through uh, uh, the prophet Ezekiel, uh, through Jeremiah, how that he is going to bring his children, brother, the, the Israelites, and, and, and something so wonderfully, uh, as we begin to think about that, you, you know the little children sang a little simple song that uh, uh, I, I, I am the seed of Father Abraham, Father Abraham, I'm one of them. Thank God you have been grafted in. You're one of them. Oh, we are of the uh, of the uh, seed of Abraham. Why? Maybe not blood a uh, seed, but uh, we have been grafted in. Paul tells us in the book of Romans, brother, and, and we belong to Christ. We, as we continue uh, talking about that, that gathering, Ezekiel twenty-eight five says this: Thus saith the Lord God. When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, they shall be sanctified, and I will be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in the land that I have given to my servant Jacob. Chapter 36, 24 of Ezekiel. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of the country and will bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 37 says this, And say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they are gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their homeland. And I will make them one nation, in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided in two kingdoms at all any more. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, 
nor with any of the transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, God is an awesome God. You know, I was talking about uh, Isaiah. He's, Isaiah 11 and 11, he says this, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah for the four quarters of the earth. Micah 2 and 12. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as a flock in the midst of their fold. For they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. Brother, there is going to be a gathering. There is going to be a, a, a gathering. God, through the prophet, verse 15, here as we close this morning, he said, I will feed my flock. I will cause them to lie down, said the Lord God. I will seek that that was lost. Bring again that that was driven away. I will bind up that that was broken. I will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Oh, I'll tell you, there's, there's coming a day. There's coming a day. Uh, Isaiah 11, uh, 40 and 11 promises he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Jeremiah agrees in 31 and 10. Jeremiah said, A he that scattereth Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doeth his flock. So uh, what a wonderful, glorious sight that we see here. Verse 23 and I will set up over one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my ser servant David. You know, God has promised King David uh, an under-shepherd role as he uh, rules the twelve tribes of Israel. David is going to be given the under-shepherd role. Brother, uh, in the eternal future, if I understand God's word, Brother David, that that man that had a, a heart of a shepherd is going it, it, to rule these 12 tribes with King, the chief shepherd, King Jesus, as Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. You know, the word tells us that the 12 apostles will reign under King David. Brother, each uh, uh, serving uh, uh, one tribe. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we'll close with this. First Peter 2 and 25. For ye were his sheep going astray, but you are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. 